I'll be happy to see her in this chair. A uh, very beautiful woman. Yeah, or sorry, there's some topic. It's Sofia Bileska, who is a physicist. Uh, also, uh, sorry, for me, uh, Sofia will present for us a very interesting uh, presentation supporting investment process for recovery of Ukrainian business in context of changing market rules. Uh, I also want to invite Vitaly Nisevra. Yeah, please. please. Applaudissements. <laughs> yeah. I try to be a little bit more emotional in this panel because uh, it's evening, we are tired, and I think little fun it's a little bit too good yeah, for communication. Uh, next speaker is a very responsible man from a very strong city, the city is Nikolaev. Uh, let me introduce Mr. Nikolai Nikolaevich. Uh, Nicola Marino, yes, Marino, it's Marino, is this? Marino, Marino, yes, of course. Uh, next speakers represented the uh, region of Kherson, Stanislav. Yeah, it's uh, Mr. Nikolai Stanislav, is deputy of the head of regional state administration of Ukraine. And uh, our fifth uh, speakers. Representative from Mr. Zaporizhia, yes? Uh, Mikhailos Morodin, welcome. Thank you for the so to love. <laughs> That's very good. Okay, I think we need to construct our discussion the next way. Uh, I think we everything here about difficult situation and sometimes terrible situation about Kherson region. Uh, and after him, so we will to see how we can fix the problem when this territory will be occupied a little bit of city of Mikolaev. Uh, after that, we, I want to hear uh, some solutions how we can to connect uh, government project and any process for recovery of Ukraine. Uh, after that, Mr. Misevra, Misevra, I apologize, Misevra, uh, talk about how we get to the part of the price and the cost and the rise, rising uh, price of real estate in the get in the catch the saved uh, money sorry in, in investors in Ukraine and start to the to fix problem with uh, when the Ukrainian market want to replace it to another country and uh, in the final presentation will be from the Mr. Zaporizhia uh, who Mr. Uh, Mikhail came to show us how we came to the, uh, sorry, came to true real project for recovery some regions, yes, from Mr. Zaporizh. Okay, let's start. Uh, Stanislav, floor is you. Uh, colleagues, pleasure to meet you and uh, present you a video of our region.
So, dear colleagues, uh, let me introduce myself again. Uh, my name is Stanislav Petrov. I'm a deputy head of Kherson Regional State Administration, a doctor of law. And uh, first of all, I thank you for having me here. Uh, actually, this is my first time when I leave uh, my Ukraine from the beginning of uh, full uh, scale invasion. And the reason uh, that brought me here is already that said uh, the war in Ukraine. So, <clears throat> I'm here um, to tell you, uh, to tell the whole world about the plight of uh, Ukrainian people and uh, I'd like uh, to give you an overview uh, about the situation in Kherson before the full-scale invasion and uh, after liberated. So, let's start. Next slide. On the 11th of November, 1918, World War One ended, and 104 years later, uh, exactly on this day, on this day, uh, half year ago, on 11th of November uh, 2022, the armed forces of Ukraine liberated Kherson and pushed back Russian military groups to the left bank of the uh, of the part of Kherson, Kherson region. Words can't describe the destruction and horror that the Kherson region has experienced and unfortunately keeps experiencing. The aggressor state, the terrorist state, violates all norms of international law and its military units possibly deport children, rob, kill, and torture civilians. Most of this will be lost. At the beginning of the full-scale war Russian Federation against Ukraine, the Kherson region was the leader of the agricultural sector of uh, Ukraine's economy, with almost 3,000 enterprises in their area providing food uh, for the region itself, the whole country, and exporting products to other countries. More than 2 million hectares of agricultural land was cultivated by these enterprises. On sunny land has been an active platform for the introduction of green energy and the region is washed by two seas with plenty of wine, wind. Prior to the full-scale invasion, there were seven wind and 47 solar power plants in the area. There were over 1,500 recreation and healthy facilities in the Kherson region. The most attractive locations for tourists were the objects of the Nature Reserve Fund of the Kherson region with a total area of 372,000 uh, hectares. In addition, the Kherson region was a comfortable harbor for small and medium-sized businesses to thrive and develop. Small and medium-sized businesses have always played in a significant role in the region's economy. There were uh, 8,500 enterprises and uh, 42,000 individual entrepreneurs operating in the region. Unfortunately, unfortunately we have to state that the consequences for the cold scaled Russian peace in the liberated part of Kherson region have resulted in the destruction or damage to more than 13. Sorry. 13,000 infrastructural facilities, 10,000 private and 1,000 apartment buildings, 306 educational institutions and 158 healthcare facilities. During the aggression, the occupiers destroyed 31 bridges and almost all roads, about 1,400 kilometers of highways need to rebuild. As a result of hostilities and constant shelling by the armed force of the Russian Federation in the Kherson region, a large number of electricity facilities have been out of order and 854 kilometers of gas pipelines have been 
dimension. Out of 228 settlements in the occupied part of Ukraine, 70 still without electricity. While retreating their occupiers, not only destroyed critical infrastructure facilities, but also looted municipal property and special equipment. There is an urgent need to obtain various types of vehicles for the public utilities to function properly and ensure the operation of emergency service in Kherson and the deoccupied part of the region. The total need of vehicles is over 1,000 units. Thanks to the heroic work of the Armed Forces of Ukraine and close cooperation of uh, the Kherson Regional State Administration with local authorities and international partners, charity and public organizations, volunteers, we, we managed to meet almost all the priority humanitarian needs of the right bank Kherson region. Given this experience, we must be ready to liberate the left bank part, which is why we have already started working on creating strategic humanitarian reserves. One of the main problems of restoring uh, Kherson region is the total contamination of the territory with mines, shells, and bombs. According to the data available, the potential explosive and ammunition contaminated territories are over 680,000 hectares. Therefore, there is an urgent need to consolidate the efforts of the international community to provide additional demanding teams, special vehicles, and relevant equipments. However, however, all sorts of infrastructure need to be built. This day, 11th of the month, 2022. Despite the terrible conditions, destructions, and danger, the heroic people, these people of the Kherson region, keep working every day to bring life back to their homeland. Utilities are restoring electricity, water, heat, supplies, and communi uh, communications. Farmers have started the sewing campaign. Teachers are preparing for the new school season, and doctors are saving lives daily. The resilience of the Ukrainian people, their ability to adapt to ex extremely difficult conditions and to keep going no matter what happens, deserves respect. This is a phenomenon that is already attracting the attention of the world. On behalf of Kherson Regional State Administration, I would like to express my sincere gratitude to all our international partners of the assistance they have already provided for implementing new projects and supporting existing initiatives. Glory to Ukraine. Thank you very much. Uh, I think we all must understand that Kherson region is every day stay under you know, very massive rockets, attacks uh, every day. Uh, Kherson spent uh, fighters face to face. I think it's the same s situation like that, like Bakhmut, uh, but a little bit scientific. No, sorry, uh, uh, we could try to apologize. But uh, here's some story not just so loud in the media. But I hope all Kherson region will be deoccupied and we will see the Ukrainian future South region because right now at this stage we can see. It's really very really interesting.
uh, Nikolai Kherson Zaporizhia, which is the south region of Ukraine. In the south, from the south, I hope, it started the rising and real recovery of Ukrainian uh, environment, Ukrainian uh, export potential, uh, sea connection with, uh, sorry, communications and collaboration in the sea, in the ships, in the, in the future marketing uh, that, we, that must to be developed in the Ukraine. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I give the word uh, representative of Mekalev region, uh, and I think you must to start from briefly introduce yourself, because I missed it before, and Florida, thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming here, for the interest to our problems in Ukraine. Uh, my name is Mikola Marinov, I'm the deputy head of uh, Mikolaev Regional State Administration. Um, Mikolaev uh, is also a big region in the south of Ukraine. Actually, it borders with Kherson. Uh, the opposite side is borders with Odessa region, and uh, in the south we are washed by Black Sea. Um, uh, our population is about 1.2 million people of the total region and uh, the capital city of Mikolaev, called Mikolaev, uh, is 500,000 or about. We have uh, 52 uh, communities in our region. So, to begin with, uh, we were more lucky than Kherson because uh, to capture Mikolaev, Russians were first to capture Kherson, and we had a couple couple, two or three days until we met them on the borders of our city. Uh, well, uh, in the end, they didn't manage to capture us. Uh, so, but, but they surrounded the city, they captured about 25% of the regional territory, and uh, they managed to stay there. Mm part of their maybe 15% of the territory, just until the liberation of Kherson too. Uh, so for 260 days, I think. Uh, this interesting, the interesting th thing is that uh, at the time when Kherson was liberated, uh, Mikolaev uh, was the most bombed city from Ukraine. Uh, out of 260 days from the start of the war and until the liberation of Kherson, uh, we were not bombed only 30. So 230 days each night. They prefer bombing us at night. I don't know why. Each night and sometimes at day, they woke up, uh, woke us up uh, with bombing. Uh, so. I will start with uh, showing some damages, uh, explaining some figures, and then try to talk about possibilities for you and for your maybe partners there. Uh, because this area is about 24 uh, square kilometers, it's quite large uh, region. Uh, as a consequence of the uh, war, uh, as a consequence of the war, the, uh, about 10% of our territory now is mine. Thank you. Uh, so let's begin with the damages. Uh, the table has unfortunately all figures. It's uh, counted on December. Uh, today I took a report for this morning and it shows us that we have 17 almost 18,000 damaged objects, um, 12,000 private houses, uh, private and high-rise houses, uh, 103 uh, hospitals, 421 educational facilities, and 204 cultural facilities. So, uh, pictures, all, all pictures are right. Uh, Unfortunately, um, during uh, this aggression, uh, 500 civilians of the Goliath region were killed and uh, one 
1,500, almost 1,500 were injured. Uh, this is including children, of course. Uh, housing infrastructure is damaged uh, significantly, uh, yet uh, it is being restored now, uh, and it uh, always uh, was the process of restoration. They bomb us at night, we wake up and bring the uh, uh, bring the materials to somehow uh, uh, close the windows, uh, repair roofs uh, out uh, from from rain, and uh, this was a constant process. Today we do not restore houses capitally because uh, after he was almost liberated, we were uh, it's like in. Uh, um, uh, it's very good now, the very good situation. Uh, after the liberation of Kherson and between now, uh, there were only three massive bombings of Nikolai, but there is still a risk, so uh, we cannot, uh, cannot do capital buildings for now. This about private housing. Uh, I'm talking about Nikolai, the capital city, but there are a lot of villages to the, that totally uh, erased from the lake surface. Uh, this is between Nikolaev and Kherson. that were seized first of all, then liberated, and then they were on the brink, on the front, and uh, destroyed by artillery. Uh, hospitals. Um, talking about uh, hospitals, um, uh, schools, uh, universities, and so on, uh, why they bombed it? Uh, why they the, well, what is the problem between Russians and this object? I think they uh, consider uh, that might, might be using that they might be using used by militants. Uh, it is not true, but they went like swept out almost every object uh, of health care and education. You know why? The only thought is they thought there were militants. Uh, this is about kindergartens, too, schools, universities. Ah, by the way, this sign on the desk says that uh, we survived, then we will held out. Uh, this is my alma mater, by, by the way, the shipbuilding university. There were only two shipbuilding universities in the uh, in Soviet Union, in Petersburg and in Nikolai, because life was a uh, shipbuilding city. It's main, uh, it, it's main, uh, main speciality during Soviet Union. By the way, cr cruiser uh, Moskva was built in Nikolaev. And it is sank not, not very far <laughs> from Nikolaev. Uh, I don't know about sport uh, infrastructure, why bombing open stadiums? Uh, you see the uh, remains, uh, it is in the stadium, it is quite big, uh, it is made by uh, an uh, air, uh, air bomb from, from a plane. Um, empty stadium, I bomb in it. Okay, it will be new. Ah, by the way, it is to be opened two days, in two days. It opens and uh, begins to uh, host ma matches. <coughs> This is about culture infrastructure and uh, even churches. Russian, Russians claim that they are very religious and fathers of uh, Orthodox Church. Well, um, they also like bombing. Administrative institutions uh, in the f uh, right uh, bottom corner, you see our office, Office of Regional Administration. Uh, it was hit. In 29 of March, 38 of my colleagues died there. Russians even didn't spare a cruise missile at us. They hit us by caliber. Uh, a lot of people survived just because the governor uh, removed the meeting. It's supposed to be half an hour earlier, and uh, Russians hit just then. Um, but many people survived because uh, it was late for one, uh, half an hour. Uh, yeah. 
airport in Italy, like in Kherson, we don't have international airport anymore, which is simply to be rebuilt, and actually there is a, a good possibility because it uh, was just before the war, there were plans to make a cargo airport out of it. Uh, we have a quite good strike there. So I hope the plans uh, will be realized. Uh, we are a port city, some, some part of port infrastructure were hit too, but we, are to, we have many ports uh, and uh, they are to be rebuilt too. I cannot tell that because Russians still, um, they still, uh, like, uh, it is likely that it will be attacked, uh, but uh, the, they are in good conditions and they wait to be included into this grain deal, so-called, uh, because if it, they are not included, they are still can be bought. Agricultural, uh, our regional is an agricultural region and uh, uh, that's not a surprise that hit, uh, they hit a lot of uh, agricultural plants, uh, infrastructure and so on. Uh, roads, uh, these are uh, some of destroyed bridges. Uh, by the way, this one is uh, about one kilometer from my house. Uh, it's a Russian tank. It, already, it is already repaired and uh, fights in the east part, eastern part of Ukraine. Uh, at our side, of course. Um, uh, these, all these bridges are already repaired, repaired temporarily. Uh, I think it can last about a couple years, and then we, in these two years we should build uh, new normal bridges according to norms. Uh, railway too. Uh, I think we didn't have any railway connection about a couple of months, and then calmly uh, trains, first cargo trains, and then passenger. Uh, started to come to the city. Uh, about utilities, uh, well, uh, we are quite stable in uh, electricity. The region, it has a uh, quite powerful nuclear plant. Also, we are good in uh, green energy. So we were stable. They didn't manage to bring us into the total blackout. Uh, so there were some problems, of course, electricity were destroyed in the uh, tea occupied uh, villages. Uh, now everything is okay with electricity, everything is repaired, also temporarily, but uh, it works everywhere. Uh, the biggest problem is that the half million Mikolaev is now without uh, fresh water. Uh, it happens so that uh, Mikolaev uh, stands on estuary. Uh, it's almost a sea and it has a salt water. So we cannot use our rivers, uh, water from our rivers, to uh, put it into, into the dump. Uh, that's why we take it from Kherson. Uh, the pipe pipe's length is about five, uh, six, 60 kilometers, and you can see this pipe damaged by Russian, Russian artillery at, uh, at the April of 2022. Uh, when this spot was liberated, we repaired it. We also repaired uh, our pumping station on the Dnipro River near Kherson. Uh, but, uh, and we calmly put the water into the dark. But uh, in maybe a month, Russians uh, somehow knew about it. And uh, now, uh, almost every day, it is bombed our pump and station, so there is, again, there is no water. Uh, there is salt water from our river. Um, we should uh, give something to the citizens. It is salt, it kills uh, almost everything. Pipes, uh, uh, pipes are from steel, uh, not plastic. Uh, it kills pipes, it uh, the life now looks like uh, Venice sometimes with these rivers uh, on, on the roads. Uh, so it's the biggest problem and uh, by the way, um, running, running the li a little before, uh, a, a little forward, uh, Denmark uh, is helping us significantly in this. 
they give us pumps, uh, they finance uh, project in water pump and so. Uh, now I show you some damages, uh, but uh, anyway, uh, the city is uh, uh, much, much better and the region is much, much better now. Uh, you can see the, uh, in the bottom of the map, you can see Kinborn. It is the only still occupied uh, territory of Mikolai Forest. Uh, by the way, this is why we cannot use our ports. They bomb the estuary, the exit of, from the ports. They control it by artillery. Uh, Mikolai is now like a paradise. We are not bombed. That's uh, uh, as, as less as people, uh, as much as people need to be happy now. We are not bombed, and uh, during the war, uh, half a million, uh, uh, half a million the population didn't have during the war. We have about two hundred thousand uh, people. Part of them were uh, militants. Now it is almost half a million again. Uh, part of them are people from Kherson uh, who are threatened now like um, like we were threatened before the liberation. They are bombed every day and now uh, just uh, until my colleague uh, was telling you the story of Kherson, I saw the news that Kherson is bombed just now. Some educational facilities, they don't, don't tell uh, which one. They don't use them now, so there are no children, that's okay, but I think uh, something is damaged. Uh, so, uh, Mikolaev, uh, population returns, uh, bridges are this or that way repaired. Um, uh, Mikolaev region is uh, the logistical region, uh, it's one of our benefits. Uh, it's situated just in the center of the south, uh, we have uh, four sea ports, quite large. Uh, we process 40, 000, uh, 40 million tons per year of the loads. Uh, we have uh, roads, a road connection to all the parts of, uh, you see this one to Kherson, this one to Dnipro, this one to, uh, to the north, this one to Kyiv, and this one to Odessa. Uh, and we had, now we had a good airport, we'll repay it, of course. Mm, the, mm, the second our asset, but the first one is our people. Uh, uh, the region was quite closed because of uh, the speciality shipbuilding during, during, I think, 200 years. It was a closed city. Uh, uh, little people could come there, uh, but uh, there were good traditions in engineering. Uh, we have a lot of uh, university facilities who can uh, teach in engineers uh, and uh, our assets, asset is this engineering tradition within the region. Uh, that is good for um, bringing plants to the uh, production. I mean. um, tourism, I, I think I'll go further because tourism uh, is not in a good condition now. Uh, the whole seashore is mined. Uh, first of all, our, our speciality mainly is uh, sea tourism, uh, beaches and uh, so on. They are all mined. There are still risks of landing operations by Russians. And uh, I think uh, the mining of the beaches uh, be like a problem because, you know, uh, sea is uh, uh, not, not very good uh, place where to put mines. That's it. Uh, one, one of the next, our specialities, uh, it is a green energy. Uh, we have a very good conditions of wind and solar uh, density. I think uh, the previous panel was about just about this. Uh, and uh, we still have a huge potential to expand it. Uh, so if somebody is interested in this, just, uh, just, uh, that's just the right place. <laughs> Uh, industry. Uh, I, I saw, uh, okay, I'll tell this later. Uh, ports, I already told you that uh, our potential, we are on the second place. Now I think uh, combining all the ports, we might be on the first place in Ukraine by the laws, by the ports. Uh, 
Uh, now they are boys, but they are to be open soon. Uh, and uh, the main, our speciality is agriculture. Uh, besides the traditional crops and sunflowers, uh, we grow uh, something like uh, <coughs> uh, shrimps, snails, uh, uh, oysters, and so on and so on. This is like uh, small, small businesses, but uh, comparing to cereals, for example. But uh, it is to tell that our black soils and our climate and our sometimes waters, for example, for, for shrimps, this, no, not small shrimps, this big, big shrimps, how do they call it? Uh, Pacific Ocean shrimp, yes. We just take, uh, just take a water from our estuary and it is okay for them. So not only black soils. Uh, about um, what, what you can do, where can you apply? in the Kalaif region. Uh, first of all, uh, you people or you colleagues, or you may bring uh, people who want to do something for recovery. For now, uh, our partner country is Denmark, and it makes some... Um, we are very happy with uh, the cooperation with them. They uh, already invested uh, very much uh, in our country. They put generators, transports uh, uh, for emergencies, for uh, did a lot of, they help us with the restoration of pumping system and so on and so on. But yet there are a lot, a lot, a lot of, of uh, fields to put uh, yourself uh, into the restoration of the Kalai first of all. Second, it is of course bringing businesses there. Uh, somebody thinks that uh, Ukraine is the, uh, the right place to relocate businesses uh, from uh, China, because China comes, uh, becomes more and more risky. And Ukraine, uh, except bad neighbors, uh, have much less risks. Uh, also, if you don't want to relocate businesses there, you may just finance our businesses, because our entrepreneurs, uh, they are uh, they understand where they will work. They already come to uh, to Mikolaev region, even if they were not presented there before the war. And we have uh, such businesses even in this room that uh, want to expand and uh, to be there. So you uh, money can finance them in loans and so and so on. There are a lot of possibilities to help us to be there to even. Uh, have some kind of businesses and uh, earn money there because Ukraine is very good. In LA. By the way, where to come? Uh, we could have created a regional office for international cooperation. Why is it needed? Because we, uh, we are seeing today some kind of a mess. A lot of different entities want to help us. They may, uh, how do you call it? It's sausage from both sides, you know, in, in a time. Uh, they can um, try to uh, do one project. Uh, so, uh, if you come to this office, uh, it's, uh, you can be sure that you will be uh, proposed the right, uh, right place for you. So, thank you for your attention. Thank you for your attention to Ukraine. Thank you for all your help that was provided to us during this war. Uh, I'll tell you, I'll never think that Ukraine is such an important part of the world uh, community and today we, we really see that we are not alone in this world. Thank you. Super. Uh, if I think I can to highlight some points about people of regions. Uh, the first, uh, Mikolaev regions keep the key from the global food security situation. Because uh, the main part of the grain export, and for export to the more than 100 countries partners, uh, it was from Mikolaev region. Uh, right now, we, yeah, we understand it's the, sorry, grain, the grain line to the Europe, Europe and the whole world, uh, from Odessa region, but the main position for storage 
for growing our agricultural sector is Mikolaev vision. Second one, it is Mikolaev also keeps the key for the clear energy security of the world. Because uh, Mikolaev, uh, South, South Nuclear Power Station, yes? Yes. South, so, right. yeah, South Ukrainian Power Station, nuclear, also was attacked in the first stage of this war. Uh, it, next, after the, uh, sorry, the usual Ukrainian, the Borishka, just... It was one missile rocket strike. Uh, oh, they, they fly under it uh, no, no, every, every, every no, time. It was strike near uh, generation uh, facilities. Uh, and total, uh, I won't highlight it, impact the war of the nuclear global security. During the 20, no, during the past year, in Ukraine was indicated more than 70, 70 incident in nuclear power stations. It's very important. I think every region in Ukraine have impact and come to influence in any situation in the world. Mikolaev have unique topics. Kherson have also unique topics. Uh, but right now I want to hear from Sofia uh, what particular issues we can to fix for uh, rising and for pumping, growing the so communication with government, territory, with, uh, sorry, financial institutions of the world, for develop of particular project and recovery of Ukraine. Well. Thank you very much, Vasily. Thank you. And uh, I want to say thank you for all the organizers, and I'm really great to, I'm really thankful for sitting here on the stage and uh, having ability, opportunity to communicate with the government somehow. Uh, so can you please uh, open my presentation? Thank you. Uh, yeah, today I have really interesting topic about supporting investment processes uh, for recovery of Ukraine and uh, for recovery of business in the context of changing rules. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, so, uh, when I heard this topic, I decided to look uh, from the perspective of business because uh, I'm the owner of the company Goldman Audit, who supports medium, small businesses in uh, financial, accounting, services, and lawyer as well. And uh, I prepared uh, five steps how uh, can small business and medium business to be heard and also what, what steps should be done for businessmen, for entrepreneur. Uh, to um, to attract inv investments and to attract investors uh, for receiving money for rebuilding and restoring the business. Because if we are talking about uh, restoration of Ukraine, of business, we are talking about people, individuals who are standing behind all this process. And all of us here uh, have a mission yeah, and uh, goal to restore and rebuild our Ukraine. So, Ukraine, uh, what is the country, Ukraine? It's a country with a powerful potential, potential and we always was the country and is still with a great potential. With our soils, with our people, minds, uh, who create, who develop, uh, who, who are the part of Europe, and yeah, the center of Europe. However, recent crisis and changing rules uh, devastated and uh, created an obstacle for the development of Ukrainian economy and business. Uh, but today I want to be a little bit positive and talk about perspectives, perspectives and about opportunities and about focus on uh, good things, not bad ones. And uh, I make a little pause yeah, about the devastations. So, uh, in the context, uh, it's important to create conditions for support and investment process and how it should be done. Yeah, Because in 2022 we saw rapid changes uh, in our growth and uh, nevertheless, no matter what, I want to show you statistics of registration of business, LLC, entrepreneurship, 
and show you that still, no matter what, we are growing. So the statistics is from the uh, State Statistics Office of Ukraine, it's official one, and if we are comparing uh, the years 2021 and 2022, we can see the growth, real growth of registrational process. And we are not talking about replaced uh, entrepreneurship or LLC, we are talking about growing, growing of business that intend to create something, to bring new places for employees and to, to, to support our Ukraine as individuals of recreation, recovery process. And uh, today I want to focus, yeah, as I told, not on negative events, but on the positive one. And uh, if we are talking from the, um, um, from the steps, what should be done to attract investors and invest uh, investitions, yeah? We are talking about improvement of investment cli climate because uh, we all understand that uh, everyday news and everyday devastation of Ukraine not supports uh, investors to invest in Ukraine. And in order to attract investment in Ukraine, uh, what can business or entrepreneurship do? It's uh, to ensure the improvement of this climate. And with the help of what? With the help of favorable conditions, with the help of clear and transparent rules uh, and unified system, how to, uh, what should be done, what steps, what rules for business to attract this money. For example, procedure one, two, three, four, and for this, business should communicate with government, of course, because it's like, uh, here we are partners about this. And of course, it's, I'm talking here about reducing bureaucratic obstacles and protecting property rights of uh, each citizen, of each businessman. Sometimes we can see the violation of these rules, yeah? And not clear system, not so transparent system for some parts of business. And of course, we should ensure stability and predictability. With the help of uh, financial literacy of other people and businessmen and entrepreneurship, so uh, like this. And as I told, Ukraine has a great potential. And if every individual starts with themselves, uh, we will improve a lot in this topic. Second step is attracting investment capital. And uh, I want to talk here uh, from the perspective of uh, of a person who owns a financial somehow business, accounting business. So I'm talking here from the documentational perspective. Because uh, not a lot of small or medium businesses understand what should be done from the document part of view. To make, for example, to conduct audits uh, in the business and to uh, how to, uh, for example, how to um, ask for startups for investition, so, and uh, what should be the procedures, and here I'm also talking about clear procedures, not from the business part, but from the governmental part, from the tax office and governmental infrastructures. Third step, uh, it's financial services, and here I, I want to stress that we have real great and strong financial services. Our banking, online banking system showed that uh, comparing to European one, I, I will talk only from Spanish for Spanish because I'm living there uh, for some period of time. Uh, it's quite fast and uh, in one, two clicks you can change currency, you can make a payment, you can uh, uh, show that the payment is in Proceeded, yeah, so it's quite progressive one. And here I'm talking about continuing improving such systems, yeah, for financial services, creating payment system. And one of the most important here uh, topics is uh, limitations of, uh, uh, of government. For example, limit limitations of paying for paying. Uh, for some products uh, abroad, because now we have a great limits and uh, some spheres cannot pay and cannot work normally. For example, uh, now we can see even um, for several weeks, maybe or one month, when touristic uh, sphere uh, was, uh, uh, was accepted some rules and they now can pay 
abroad for their clients, yeah? but before they couldn't do it. Uh, so also here on each step and each level I'm talking about governmental support for the business and uh, the bridge between the business and between uh, the government because sometimes uh, we are not heard and government are not heard from the business perspective. Uh, and also um, and also here we can see only the active development of these systems and we can see the payment systems, even Kuna, yeah, and Monova, private bank, and also the, the rest of the banks, which we have quite progressive one. Uh, fourth step, uh, it's step uh, development of technological innovations. So one on, on the main factors supporting investment process for business recovery in Ukraine is the development of technological innovations. And uh, here I will talk about um, such yeah, such things like DIA, support of startups, and really great services that we see nowadays. Even uh, if we are small, uh, if there is small business or medium business, uh, everything could be done via DIA uh, for several clicks without no hard uh, hard procedures. Yes, and. Uh, um, what should be stated here is to also ensure some procedures by idea, for example, giving idea the ability to um, uh, to change the rest infrastructure, not only text or our document one. Cifrova um, Ukraina, which opened the doors to the uh, startups and to the businesses as well. And uh, here I want to give also several ideas about CRM ERP system and about uh, optimizing, optimizing business processes because if you are talking about scaling and recovering process, we are talking about uh, finding the ways how to optimize the work of people and scale our business and make it grow. Yeah? So it's, it will be very great if there will be some procedures and programs for small and medium business to uh, optimize and optimize their processes with CRM systems, new one, and uh, ERP systems. And uh, the last uh, one step for me, uh, it's a very important one because now uh, as a certified coach as well as the owner of uh, financial business, uh, uh, I work with vol volunteer organizations and support per person, individuals, uh, um, partially located from Kupiansk to Kharkiv and uh, what I saw, I saw that uh, each individual who helps Ukraine to restore and rebuild um, all infrastructures, businesses and so on needs to um, remember about personality level and internal stability because for people who help um, somebody here yeah, who helped a lot of people, but we should remember about our self-care and about uh, our resources, internal one. And uh, what should be done here, yes, it's uh, uh, support of people who change their places and taking care about them with some projects and uh, um, projects such as psychological help, coaching help if it's needed and, uh, and helping people to helping people to get used to the new reality because not all of them are strong enough to understand what's going on and how to live further. And uh, my here is ideas is to remember about sport, about physical uh, support, about even meditation somehow and uh, remembering about each individual, about ourselves to help and to restore Ukraine uh, more strongly, like we do here. So it was my five steps and I decided to do my presentation as short as possible, just with uh, real steps, what, what, what can be done and what ideas I have. Thank you very much for listening. Yeah, please, my contact, you can contact me by WhatsApp and Telegram. Maybe. Somebody want to ask some questions? Okay. Uh, thank you very much. People, it's very important. Yeah, it's 
with all people we can do make some changes in, in, in this world. Okay, uh, next speaker. Miss Miserva. Uh, Miserva. Uh, Vitalia. Just Vitalia. Yeah. Uh, represent the real estate and sector. Yes? Yes. Okay. Welcome. Thank you for coming. Uh, my name is Vitaly Misevra, and uh, I'm dealing with the real estate from the 2008. Uh, I started as a broker, and five years later, I founded my company, Estate, Estate Invest Agency, in Kharkiv in 2013. And at this moment, um, we have offices in uh, Kharkiv, Kiev, Alanya, Mersin, Istanbul, and uh, uh, we are working on the opening office in Dubai. Uh, for this moment, uh, we have 107 employees. Uh, before war, it was a bigger number, but okay, in any case. Uh, the, main, um, the main directions of uh, my business is rent and sale of residential and commercial real estate, design projects, repair works, and property management. The case specialization is work with the investors and turnkey investment management. So today's my speech uh, is about importance of cooperation between city authorities, uh, real estate developers, and real estate community for the return of the capital in the sector of real estate in the Ukraine. Uh, working both with final buyers and uh, investors, uh, we see now uh, the capital flowing out of the Ukraine real estate market uh, into overseas property. At least uh, 50. 50% of our clients willing to uh, lose their money abroad. Um, how much is it 50%? Uh, for example, uh, the total amount of sold uh, by our company, the total amount of uh, sold for our company uh, real estate in 2021, the year before, it was uh, from 52 to 53 uh, million dollars. Uh, so, uh, we can only imagine how much uh, money uh, for this moment wants to go abroad from the Ukraine. Uh, for example, in 2022, uh, we sold uh, to our clients' uh, property uh, total cost. It was uh, 11.5 million uh, euros uh, in Turkey and more than 7 million of dollars uh, in Dubai. So. Uh, I can't even imagine how much uh, money is only from our company, but how much money now are uh, going out from the Ukraine real estate market abroad. So it's crazy number for me. Um, the, at the same time, the investment interests uh, of the buyers uh, are very low. They don't want to buy any property in Ukraine, and uh, the market of Central and Eastern uh, Ukraine uh, moving only on the buyers who want to buy an apartment for life with, with some discount. Uh, so, uh, I want to um, consider the disadvantages of Ukrainian market organization uh, of Primark and Turkey and offer our vision of possible solutions. As, as you can see, here is uh, three main uh, players who uh, are raising uh, capital uh, in the real estate in Ukraine. It's the state, uh, the government, uh, its developers, and real estate uh, community. And uh, I think that uh, uh, by working together, we could uh, um, stop uh, or try to stop uh, the going out of our capital. Let's start from the, just, uh, let's start from the first uh, part of communication. It's uh, the, between the state and developer. Uh, I know that the problem is not exactly in our plane, uh, not the plane of the realtors. Uh, and uh, we know that the issue uh, has not been discussed at the state level uh, between developers and authorities and solutions are, are being solved. It's just our outside view. In Turkey, for example, it is much easier to enter the field of construction. Uh, and some of our Ukrainian uh, partners, developers, uh, have already started projects in uh, Turkey in less than a year, and they received all the permits and started construction and uh, selling property. Uh, how does the market uh, work in Turkey? It is not monopolized. For example, in uh, Alanya, uh, there are more than 130 developer companies 
for a city of only less than uh, half a million people. Uh, the municipal authorities stimulate the growth of the number of construction companies rather than preventing it. Uh, this leads to a high level of competition between companies and constant growth in uh, the quality of the real estate. Uh, there are currently more than 300 construction companies operating in Istanbul, building uh, more than 500 projects. And it is important to understand uh, their uh, size and the level of these uh, projects. Just a small video of some how to. Uh, uh, there is no sound. Uh, I don't know why, but okay. <laughs> In any case, you can see the uh, size and uh, uh, and what uh, and the facilities of this property. Uh, so, and the, the question arises: Why incomparable climatic conditions with the comparable wages in the construction industry, with the comparable cost per square meter? Uh, they built here a maintain of high level of infrastructure, uh, while our oper uh, operative advantage is the availability of concierge in Ukraine. Overall, the challenge is proven private investor access to the construction industry. Uh, what we see in the realtors. Uh, there are plenty of people who want to build privately, uh, but the institutional risks are so great that the maximum they dare to do to build cottage communities out of the city. Uh, it would be desirable if the state from its side would give uh, some bonuses for foreign buyers for, for buying real estate in Ukraine. For example, um, simplified residence permit, uh, tax benefits for business, uh, work permits, I don't know. Uh, like, uh, let's go. Uh, and the second part of communication is uh, between the state and real estate companies. In Ukraine, there is no positive image of the professional realtor. <laughs> and um, in fact, uh, at the legislative level, the profession itself. Uh, for some reason, all attempts uh, by the state to adjust uh, the proxies are re reduced immediately to regulation measures and uh, aimed mainly at taxation. Uh, without any positive side for real estate community and those companies who deal with the real estate systematically. Uh, in the eyes of the people, um, I of the broker from the 90s, with, uh, with, which does not bear any professional knowledge and uh, consequently and value for the client. In this case, the lack of the uh, system affects mostly large companies that uh, are willing to work by the rules, uh, but not private brokers. The truth holder to enter the profession is very low. In Turkey, Dubai, America, uh, every realtor must take courses and pass the exams. After that, he can work as a realtor for a hire. In order to uh, open his own real estate firm uh, and get right to accept money uh, for services, he must work at least one year in a company that has already have a license. Only after that, he gets the right to open his own company make uh, transactions, accept money, and uh, most importantly, advertise on the marketplaces. Uh, that is why in Turkey you cannot advertise without having a license. Uh, creating a positive image for the consolidation of the profession at the state level will improve uh, quality of services provided. Uh, th this will increase the confidence of investors, including foreign investors in the professional and the real estate market as a whole. For example, uh, about 98% of transactions in the U.S. are made with the participation of brokers. Uh, and the final uh, part of communication uh, here is between the developer and real estate companies. Uh, people buy from people. I don't think many of you know all developers in your uh, hometown, but when you know at least one realtor in every city or country and you have been interested in real estate. Uh, how, how do you get your capital back and bring uh, investors back to Ukraine? In Dubai, Turkey, real estate developers uh, offer decent and transparent uh, conditions for realtors. This allows them to attract uh, investments from all over the world and direct the domestic demand from the secondary market uh, to the developers. 
Moreover, uh, Turkey, uh, in Turkey, developers do not sell at all. They focus on the quality of uh, construction and the sales are completely in the hands of the real estate agencies. It, it helps to understand what the uh, end customer uh, wants and create projects which are uh, relevant to time and place. Even now, uh, creating more favorable terms for cooperation for realtors, it, it, can, it can help uh, redirect some of the capital of the investors uh, to themselves, stopping out of the capital. Uh, 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 now a few words about White Elephant example, uh, its project in Kharkiv. Uh, it was built uh, five years ago and uh, it was some problems with the, uh, with the sales. So they can't sell a finished house. So that, that is constructed and it was a really good house. Uh, at that time, uh, building companies did not pay realtors at all or paid only 1% of commission and uh, did not fix uh, their clients for the agencies who bring uh, the client. So, uh, a construction company of this project uh, made a 2% commission and uh, made a clear fixation for clients, uh, of clients for agents. Uh, and the realtor community helps, uh, helped uh, to the uh, owner sold this more than 85% of the house less than six months. Uh, so, uh, in Turkey, in addition, for, for local clients, there are interested, uh, increased interest for attracting their foreign capital. Uh, it is logical. After all, uh, the market and costs of real estate agencies to work with the foreigner uh, markets is higher. Uh, but uh, now, the main uh, task to stop, uh, stop, stop the outflow of the national capital from the real estate sector abroad. Uh, by the cooperation between developers and the uh, real estate community. For example, now in Kyiv, almost all uh, developers' company uh, don't pay commission at all for attracting the client. So uh, the question arises, what is the realtor's motivation to bring a client to developer company uh, into Ukraine to stay money inside the country uh, to give uh, What's the motivation to sell a uh, developer's company uh, to that which uh, pay taxes, creating jobs, uh, increases the GDP, and not that just to sell uh, him apartment on the secondary market, and probably where uh, the owner wants to, <laughs> to lose here money abroad. So uh, it is a really strange situation as for me. So. Uh, by working together uh, as a state developer, a real estate team, we could all attract not only grant and loan capital to developers and to the country, but also money from the private investors. Thank you. So, super presentation, thank you very much. Uh, I think as the next question uh, that you come to master fix, uh, in the legislative layer, and uh, I know from my side, communication is Council Built Ukraine, it's from University of Applied Science. Uh, how we came to fix the problem with uh, construction and using uh, the small, fast modeling houses, not for refugees, uh, for educational goals, and for others, uh, for the others, uh, social. Uh, issues uh, that we can to be to needed to fix in the local areas. Yeah, and final presentation today uh, from the regional Zaporizhia. Zaporizhia, you know everyone, it's a very industrial city, but I think the topic will be something different. Yeah, and Kayu, what's your? Uh, simple. Uh, we start from, my name is Mikhail, and uh, I'm um, represent an investment uh, association of the Borussia, and we start, no, not from uh, presentation, but from video, uh, short introduction from our major. <coughs> Thank you.
Вітаю вас, шановні друзі, колеги, партнери. Мене звати Анатолій Куртів. Я секретар Запорізької міської ради, виконуючи обов'язки міського голови. 24 лютого наше Запоріжжя стало прифронтовим містом і залишається таким і досі. Сьогодні за 50 км від нас полягає лінія розмежування. Всього за 50 км від нас російські війська кожного дня обстрілюють позиції українських захисників. Всього за 50 км від нас стоять ворожі танки, артилерійські установки та зенітна ракетні системи. Так, ті самі жахливі системи, які принесли нашому Запоріжжю стільки біди і горі, які залишили сотні запорізьких сімей без домівок та вбили їх рідних, чоловіків, дружин, сестер, братів, дітей. З початку війни російські ракети пошкодили в Запоріжжі більше 500 багатоповерхових будинків та 400 будинків приватного сектора. Прямі влучення повністю зруйнували 12 приватних будинків, а в сини багатоповерхових будинках тепер взагалі немає цілих під'їздів. І знищено 275 квартир. Ворожі ракети пошкодили 26 шкіл, 17 дитячих садків, 2 позашкільних навчальних заклади, лікарні, поліклініку та 2 медичні амбулаторії. Нам дуже потрібно все відновити. Наші люди повинні знову повернутися в рідні домівки, а наші діти повинні ходити до відновлених заходів освіти. І ми дуже розраховуємо на вашу підтримку та фінансову допомогу. Без сильного плеча міжнародної спільноти нам ніяк не впоратися. А з вами ми обов'язково переможемо. First of all, thank you, um, all of you, um, and I am glad to see a lot of uh, listeners in this room. Uh, I start my presentation from a uh, short introduction about city, mention some numbers related to the current situation, and after that I present uh, one of our projects, uh, social oriented project, uh, where we are looking for investment to realize it. Um, actually, Zaporizhia uh, is located on Dnipro River, and it's a main um, river of our country, um, and it's an important uh, critical Uh, strategical uh, city in this situation. Um, the city stretches across both sides of uh, the river and uh, the central part of the city we have a Hortica uh, island, the biggest river uh, island in uh, the Europe and it's a historical area where Um, Ukrainian identity uh, started where uh, Ukrainian people started uh, to get independence from uh, Russian Empire uh, ages before. And um, generally, the Zaporizhia, the six largest city in Ukraine with a population uh, more than seven uh, hundreds or thousands people before uh, the war. And uh, <clears throat> after war started, um, we have internally uh, displaced persons in the city It's around uh, one hundred and fifty thousands and it's a, a big number and 
if you see, it's uh, uh, approximately 20% of the general population of the city, and it's a big problem and big challenge um, and for our council and for our government and for our society and for business uh, and so on. Um, as um, colleague mentioned, um, the Parisia is rightly uh, industrial and metallurgical heart of Ukraine. It's, uh, our major industries and um, they are located um, around uh, two, 219 industrial uh, facilities. And um, from, for now we have uh, around um, 15 uh, damaged and destroyed uh, industrial facilities and uh, it also a problem because uh, our uh, productive much less than was uh, before what started and as I uh, it, as you hear from uh, information from our major, we have a lot of damages of uh, private houses and multi story buildings and uh, schools and kindergartens and so on. <clears throat> our um, economics of our city and our region mostly is export oriented and uh, around 70% uh, as uh, export products and export uh, goods and services. And in the last year uh, we have um, less uh, incomes after export as for 18 uh, percent and it's a, a big issue for the city as well. A lot of industrial facilities continue work in current situation and current um, positive balance of our budget, budget of the city is um, um, 1,500 million dollars. Um, it's a short diagram with um, our investment partners provided by uh, countries and uh, the first place is Netherlands, after that we have uh, Cyprus, Slovakia, United Kingdom. I don't know why we still don't have uh, Switzerland in the statistics, but I think we will solve this, this next year. Um, in current time, um, our council uh, developed uh, several um, common projects with um, a list of uh, world uh, famous uh, big companies, um, and it's a, a, our major. Uh, partners in um, social oriented area. It's a European investment bank. Uh, we work with uh, them in the field of thermal modernization and uh, public sector facilities. It's a, a German development bank uh, in the same uh, area of thermal modernization and uh, international financial corporations and they help us to uh, improve urban transport and safety management systems of, of the city. Also, um, the ICO, Financial Corporation, and Danish Danish program, also French company, uh, Litin. They have our best, uh, waste management. And uh, the last one is uh, Humanitarian Information Center. It's uh, our 
um, local um, community of several uh, business structure and uh, uh, humanitarian organizations and volunteer organizations we are trying to uh, cooperate our efforts and focus on the right uh, directors and uh, build um, good communications and develop and relationships and uh, run and complete a lot of uh, projects to, together. Um, there are uh, four main areas of our problems which we are trying to solve. First is a provision of housing for uh, internal and displaced person and um, there are <coughs> two components in this area. First of all, we have to provide housing to people who already stayed in the city. And the second one is we uh, want to uh, help people uh, who are now in Europe or in other countries to come back to uh, home country to the Parisia. Um, the second area is an, an energy security and engine energy efficiency. It's uh, also a very important area because uh, you know we uh, we were um, rarely. Uh, depends from uh, Russian uh, natural gas as uh, energy resource and uh, when uh, price for energy resources up to uh, twice it was three, four times it's a, a big problem and for business and for industry and for uh, each person uh, or home, homes uh, uh, and for the city generally, and we try to uh, rebuild this area uh, to get more uh, <coughs> life cost resources. And the third is the uh, demand um, and just, uh, restoration of territories. Uh, for now, um, seventy percent of the Parisian region are still occupied and around 15% uh, of uh, region territory uh, requires uh, the mine because a lot of uh, war actions uh, were going and uh, going for now in our region. And the fourth uh, area is uh, Volunteer activity and distribution of humanitarian uh, aid. Um, and um, the project, what I would like to introduce, is uh, named the Parisia. Zori is the future of housing solution. The uh, Parisia Zori, it's like the Parisia science shines. Stars, yeah. so, um, and we try to provide housing for um, hundreds of IDPs to help them to, to the Ukraine is uh, our uh, goal of this project. Um, complex um, designed for comfortable living of people who have an urgent need of housing and mm, it's a, we will provide a, a better accommodation uh, for about um, 960 people and it's uh, around uh, 300 families. Um, we took care um, of the full range of engineering support necessary for functioning of the complex. Um, and complex will uh, consist of four, four apartment cottages, um, 
my builds not a um, uh, higher level of cottages, but it's fully um, uh, made energy saving and energy efficiency standards. The bridge is already designed with the end of multifunctionality and maximum efficient of investment. We use a modern design practice, uh, architectural practice to, to realize this project. Um, complex can be permanent, uh, can be permanent or temporary housing, uh, and this structure can be used in the health, rehabilitation, or sanitary facility. It's mean after uh, the situation will uh, normalize uh, this uh, village uh, will be used for uh, different uh, goals and it will be compactless and convenience um, modern view optimal materials architecture and so on that's uh, some numbers about um, the uh, projects about this um, uh, sizes, capacity, and so on. Please change this number. Um, and uh, model of uh, realization of the project is the next. Um, city provide us with um, uh, what of land for this project. Um, it's uh, really useful for us and uh, will provide us with a great discount for uh, utility bills, water supply and electricity and it will be low cost to uh, live here and it's uh, interesting to invest in this project. Uh, also, we have uh, partners from private uh, businesses who are already who are ready to uh, perform uh, for, for free some part of uh, job to construct and to realize this uh, project. And also, we are, uh, have uh, um, some donors. Uh, they, can help us to provide with um, building materials, uh, but it's not enough to complete all these projects, and it's uh, why we are looking for uh, investors uh, to get an additional funds for implementation. Um, and as I mentioned before, uh, the Parisian Zori is not a single project what we run, we are also uh, have uh, several uh, projects uh, of renovating uh, existing buildings in the city to uh, provide housing services for uh, what is needed. And this picture is one of our objects. Is, uh, also required uh, investment. Uh, it's already renovated with external, with communications, uh, and so on, but we are required investment to run away inside each apartment uh, and com complete it with needed equipment. Um, we have built a um, partnership relationship with uh, building construction company for uh, Finnish uh, new uh, complexes in the city and we ask them to provide part of uh, existing apartments for uh, this needs as well. And um, uh, yes, that's it. It's uh, our contacts and if you are interested, please uh, photo this and Feel free to reach out to us and we are ready to discuss any opportunities. Thank you for your time. Sorry, just, just one more uh, question. You see that uh, we have all have uh, all regions have similar problems, like uh, you can uh, choose any region and there are, uh, they are. But there are answers. 
just heard the news. Uh, the CEO of Rain Metal, you know what Rain Metal is, it is uh, German, uh, the biggest German uh, manufacturer of armors, uh, of tanks. Uh, for example, top 10 Leopard 2 is... Uh, the same like Tucson Proofs. Yes, and so on and so on. So, on. so uh, he announced that in a couple of weeks uh, they'll uh, make a joint venture with Ukrainian partners uh, to produce 400 tanks uh, per year, and munitions, and so on and so on and so on, in Ukraine. Uh, I want to tell some information uh, if in the whole uh, uh, representative from Switzerland for international business. I would highlight for communication with regional administration, local administration, we don't need to uh, looking for the very long way through office president or government. We can to speak directly with representative of regional administration, the local community. It will be tomorrow faster and accelerate the process of recovery. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much for your long time. <laughs> But we stand together. I thank the speakers. Uh, I think it was a very interesting discussion. Discussion, and uh, you told very, really, very important topics.